Hello and welcome back to Getting Your Money's Worth. We're here this afternoon with our second guest, Mike Myers, Michael Myers, co-founder and director of New York Civil Rights Coalition. Michael is really the conscience of New York City. Hello and welcome to the show. Thank you, Judith. Yeah. It's good to be here. Uh, Michael, you were born in Harlem. Mm -hmm. uh, born and raised. Born and raised in Harlem. Central Harlem. Do you call yourself a ghetto kid? No. 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 But you were well, raised I'm a product of the ghetto. You're a product of the ghetto. Absolutely. Okay, fine. Uh, earlier on the show, we had Congressman Badillo, mm -hmm. and his thesis of his book is that Hispanic parents must take responsibility for their kids' achievement in school. How do you feel about that theme of parents taking the greater part of responsibility? Well, I have mixed feelings about it. Um, you, the response that I have is, of course, parents must take responsibility for their children. They've got to get their children to school, but and they have to make sure their children do homework, and the parents have to go to parents' teachers' meetings and conferences, and the parents should stay on the principles to make sure that their students are doing well. Of course, parents have a responsibility. However, However. schools also have the primary responsibility because not, all, not everyone comes from a first, so-called first-class home or household. Not everybody comes from families that have books in the home. Now, everybody comes from ha our homes where people prize education, where people have, have just demonstrated. And also, families come from homes where their parents have two and three jobs. Absolutely. And there are also parents who do come from edu highly educated homes but don't care about their children. Right. So we have to get away from stereotypes. Exactly. So I say it's the primary responsibility for the education of the child is with the school, with the teachers. And you've got to have good, not good teachers, these days, you've got to have great teachers, great teachers. effective teachers. Right. You know, uh, we, we spend a lot of money in this country, over $600 billion a day, uh, a year, for schools. Mm -hmm. And the truth is, the one that are we getting our money's worth? In an attempt, in an attempt to really uh, improve and change conditions in New York City, we have another set of changes by the present administration. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about some of those. Sure. Uh, Mayor Bloomberg says that there should be more power and more accountability within the province of the principal. You would agree? I would have agreed with that when from Bloomberg first took office. Or from a long time ago. Now he's in his second term. Right, from a long time ago. It took ago. him so long. Went, exactly. exactly. It's like the CEO, <laughs> like, hello. Right. But he also, there's a caveat to that, that for the first time, teachers are going to start rating principals. How do you think that's going to work? Well, it, the problem with Bloomberg is he keeps rediscovering things that have been discovered a long time ago. Right. I was trained in education by Kenneth Clark, right. the social psychologist. An who icon, was, right. Who was for 20 years a member of the Board of, Edu Board of Regents in New York State. Uh, also trained by Ted Hollander, right. Chancellor of Higher Education in New Jersey. Something we know about education is that good teaching, good schools, good principals, good students, they all equal right. excellence in education. You gotta have, as Herman Medill keeps saying, high standards and high expectations of students. And you have to have high expectations of teachers and principals. And the teachers and principals have to be in a partnership. They can't be at odds. Right. And that's one of the reasons why I believe that Bloomberg broke his promise to, to New Yorkers at least, because he was going to tear up the teacher's contract, make it maybe eight pages as opposed to hundreds of and pages. And now it's so much. It's still a mismatch. Right. And you have to have a situation where teachers can be held accountable, not in terms of attendance and whether or not they can come to school with on time, but performance. Right. Performance measured by the academic achievement of their, their students. Kids. Exactly. Or the lack of academic achievement right. of their students. Exactly. You know, it really makes me, uh, uh, it angers me when I hear about uh, the, the lack of measuring teachers' performance. How, but he is uh, trying to touch that now with this business of reform of tenure. Yes. Tenure, where else does tenure, that kind, of, that kind of thinking exist? Tenure is demoralizing. Would you agree? Tenure is in the university right. as well. I wouldn't call it demoralizing. I would say in terms of unions, or something unions want. I don't think the teachers should be able, bad teachers, should not be able to hide behind 
tenure right. and hide behind union rules. Right. But I don't blame the teachers, and I don't blame the, 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 the issue of unions for that. What I do is blame do the managers because they sign off on these contracts. They sign off on it, right. Bloomberg signs off on these contracts. But after all, <laughs> why, shouldn't, why shouldn't teaching be like any profession? You do a good job, you keep your job. You don't do a good job, you get fired like everybody else. In the, I, why I, why, I, why I, should it be different? I agree with that. Why should it be different? I agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> Now we're but it's not going to happen. This it's is not New York. It's a union town. This is right. This is a union town. Right. So the best that can be done is to reform or go back and change some of the habits that have grown up. That's right. Right. Uh, you know, when and, I went and, to... And, you may, and that, mean, that means that a good teacher should be able to go to the worst schools. <laughs> because too many of children who are underachieving, and that's a lot of minority children who are consigned to the dung heaps of our public right. education school system, right. they get... When they get to those schools, they get bad teachers because the good teachers don't want to teach problem, quote-unquote, problem right. children. Or they get very inexperienced teachers when right. they are exactly the population that should have a more experienced exactly right. teacher. Uh, you know, the Marines... You need, you need to be able to manage the right. schools. School. You know, the Marines have a philosophy about they shall prevail, the United States Marines. And they really build the recruitment of Marines into their culture. Yes. Now, we're talking about inexperienced teachers teachers coming into the profession, is there something wrong with the kind, is there something wrong with the kind of people that are coming into teaching? Yes. What is that? Plain and simple. Well, the teachers, many of the teachers are a reflection of our society. We've lowered standards. We've dumbed down society. Right. So a lot of the teachers are not what they used to be. I, I went to schools, public schools in Harlem, Central Harlem, and the South Bronx. Uh, we escaped that through an integration plan, and, but while I was going to the, to the, to the ghetto schools in Harlem, we had good teachers. Right. They knew stuff, right. and they were, and they taught us stuff. If you don't have a teacher who can teach you, who doesn't know anything, doesn't know anything. Who, teach, who talks like you do, and that's not perfect English. I don't mean you. I mean when you're a student, right. and it's not perfect English. If a student's not in the front of the classroom and around the classroom, telling, showing you what you can do, broaden your horizons, narrow, uh, eliminate narrow constrictions in the mind, stretch, stretch, your, stretch, stretch your, mind. your mind, give you broader horizons in that classroom, get you out of the ghetto. Guess what? You fall behind. You don't have confidence. You, have, you don't have self-esteem. Right. Teachers have everything when it comes down to a they are, they, poor right. and undereducated right. kid. Well, you know, when I went to public school and when you went, I don't know that my parents were that involved at all. That's right. They saw, there was the assumption, if you would, that you went to school and you automatically got a good education. Yes. Something changed. Well, my generation, there, we were the first, I was the first to graduate from high school. Right. Graduate from college, et cetera. But my, my mother had a sixth grade education. But my mother's responsibility was to get me to school. Right. Not that she had to force me out and kick me out, because I love school. Right. But <laughs> you love school because you also felt that when you got there, something was happening to Absolutely. you. Absolutely. And I don't know that. Well, I, I'm not prepared to give kids a pass anymore, but I have this sense that many kids feel that when they get to school, it ain't, there's nothing there for them. Well, if there's nothing there for them, they got to blame the principals and you have to blame, right. blame the system. Well, because when you go to a school, you got other kids. You got to interact with other kids. You got teachers to interact with. You got right. principal. If the principal is doing his or her job, there's something there to broaden your horizons as a student and to turn you on as a student to education, to broaden your horizons, to get you out of your narrow, your narrow environment. If that's not happening, then the problem is responsibility lies with and their accountability must be put on the principal and the staff, meaning right. the teachers. So what we're seeing now, it may be too late, it, but it's not too much too late, we hope. What we're seeing now is an attempt to restructure some very bad habits. Absolutely. It's not too late. It's not but too, it's a it's long right. time coming right. because we've got to get rid of the paternalism we got to get rid of the stereotypes of minority group children that they don't want to learn, they can't learn, their home environment keeps them from learning. What do you think get about all those stereotypes? What do you think about No Child Left Behind? I think it's important. I think it's important because No Child Left Behind is talking about standards. Exactly. The same thing that Herman Medelia and others talk about. Standards. What's wrong with standards? Okay. On that note, we're going to close. Uh, we've had our, with us Michael Myers, director of the Civil Rights Action Coalition. New York Civil Rights Coalition. New, New, New York Civil Rights Coalition. I knew I was going to have trouble with that. <laughs> it's all those C's. C's. Right. <laughs> New York Civil Rights Coalition, uh, who has really reinforced what a lot of folks are saying in this country today, which is forget all the excuses. No Child Left Behind really is talking about a mentality of no more excuses. Thank you very much, Michael, for Thank being you. on the show. It was a pleasure. pleasure. Thanks for watching.